This next song's a love song and about something very close to my heart. Downhill scary It drove is too much for me It's trail riding Ooh yeah I don't like XC A down country ain't enough for me It's trail riding Ooh yeah No steep so long for me I like gentle berms between the trees It's trail riding Ooh yeah Oh for fuck It's horrid and it's gold I'll just do what I am told Filming inside Ooh yeah I don't like the snow But I got nowhere else to go No trail riding for me Now my uh, music career to one side and stay tuned for my bluesy rendition of Papa was a roller bearing. I really do love trail riding, but sometimes it feels like it exists within an industry and within a space that is full of so many inconsistencies. For instance, one week you could be hearing someone tell you why having the heaviest bike is very important and something you absolutely should have. And then the next video tell you about why lightweight trail bikes are the absolute best thing. But there are inconsistencies everywhere both in the way that we categorize bikes and the brands that we ride. Now the last 10 years has seen lots of things come and go and jump between ultra conservative to super progressive and everything in between. There was plus size tires, that weird period where everyone was making carbon fat bikes, as well as the death of the free ride bike. And then coincidentally, the birth of the 180 mil enduro bike. I can't hang about here. And of course you see that with brands as well. Brands jumping around and having you wondering what their character or values even are and what they really represent. It's funny, I used to live in Somerset in England and my neighbour swore he saw Jacob Rees-Mogg in a decked out Citroen Saxo listening to Wu-Tang and sometimes you just don't know what to believe. But these inconsistencies are everywhere and it's interesting to note how prevalent they might be within some brands yet absent they are within others. For instance, with Specialised you normally know what you're getting, something sleek effective, pragmatic. Commensal might flip the big saucy saw right up at carbon fiber and do it on the racetrack with any number of fast Frenchies. YT might ask you if hair metals come back in yet and what you think of their leopard print jeggings. But Canyon? Canyon are an interesting brand because they're pulled so many different ways by so many compelling factors. You see, one minute they are dad socks and sandals and the next minute, they're tequila out the bottle. Because you know, Canyon are a fascinating brand. If not only because the depth of world-class athletes they have, all vying for your attention. They have Matthew van der Poel battering at the door of any category of race that he enters, which is ironic seeing how his world champs went. You also have Tani Seagrave sending booters in North Wales. You have Fabio Vidma sending stair sets harder than your nan once her second dose of night nurse has kicked in. And that's not even mentioning Troy Brosnan getting it done on the regular, Brad Sims, Phoebe Gale, Emily Batty. They have so many world-class athletes and world-class athletes demand world-class bikes. And their bikes pull in all directions too. For instance, let's talk about the Sender, which is a World Cup winning downhill bike. It has got great geometry, coupled with some really well thought out features. But then, you think of something like the Canyon Lux Trail, which took the Lux, threw 30 mil of extra reach at it, and the worst brakes they could find in the parts drawer, and called it a day. In their range, they also have some genuinely interesting bikes, like for instance, that ginormous Strive, which if the internet is to be believed, Jack Moyer was riding in a triple extra small. Or maybe think about something like that badass Spectral 125. Now this brand seemed to be jumping between weird, wild, and wonderful at the drop of a Tyrolean hat. But their next bike, well, their next bike has got me pretty excited. So much so, I've even been told it's a shoes off job. Let's see what they've got in store. 
and what they've been cooking up could prove to be very important. This is the brand new Canyon Neuron. Punch it, Chewy. <laughs> it's like Paddy and Zelma's smoking cupboard in here. Let's get down to Vancouver. Apparently the trails are open. Leave your dummies behind you, naughty, naughty boy, and let's get going. I don't like Ixi. A down country ain't no good for me. Okay. Bloody all year riding in North Vancouver. The only thing you have all year here is bloody trilbies, slam poetry, and incessant clicking. Godness me. Oh, that's nice. That's pretty good. Ah, oh, you are kidding me. Apparently, it never bloody snows in North Vancouver. So unless you come down here for your nine dollar macchiatos and to look cool and your bloody Tesla in the car park of Whole Foods. Oh my God, back to the studio. The bloody snow. So this new neuron has 130 mil of rear travel paired to 140 mil fork and it's got some pretty healthy geometry dimensions in there too, notably getting quite a bit bigger compared to the previous version. This size large has a 480 mil reach. Now it's 29 inch wheels front and back, thank you very much, with a 66 degree head tube angle paired to a 76 degree seat tube angle. And now I can tell you that this is going to be a very important bike and not just for Canyon but for mountain biking in general. And that's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, remember all those athletes I said pulling in different directions? Well, Canyon's customer base is as varied as it is large, and there are lots of different demands pulling on what the new one should be. It's also an important bike to Canyon specifically because the outgoing Neuron was probably the last of the weird bikes in its range. It wasn't a bad bike, but at times it could feel like a bit of a waterbed and placed too much emphasis on comfortable cycle paths in Bavaria more than it did on technical real mountain biking. But this bike, especially when placed alongside that Strive and the whole family of spectral bikes, really does show that Canyon are very much up to the here and now with their off-road trail and enduro bikes. Before we go into a deeper dive on this bike, let's take a good look at that geometry chart. And it starts off with a really important acknowledgement. A good bike needs balance and stability, but the two are actually quite different. Balance is all about how the weight is rested between the two wheels, and stability is how well that balance position can resist external forces. Both are vital. For instance, that 66 degree head tube angle is actually a bit steeper than some other bikes in the same travel category, and is gonna put your weight on the front wheel. But it's coupled with a comparatively high stack. This size large has a stack value of 639 millimeters. A high stack value, which can be loosely interpreted with how high that front end is, will actually take weights off the front axle and place it over the rear axle. It also has the added benefit of bringing the handlebars closer to the rider and potentially more in range. This really comes to the fore in a few key areas. So firstly, that seat tube angle, which at 76 degrees isn't too steep, is on a bike with a quite large 480 mil reach. So what that high stack is going to do is it's going to balance that out a bit. And as the stack gets higher, it essentially reduces the distance between your contact points or the effective top tube, meaning it's going to keep it balanced and well within range and stop the bike feeling a bit too large when sat down. But I hear you asking, don't we want our seat tube angles pretty much perpendicular to the curvature of the earth? Well, firstly, as everyone knows, the earth is flat, so you can forget about that. But also our seat tube angles are relative to the degree of climb that we are climbing. So on our enduro bikes, when we tend to winch up something very, very steep before bombing down, on our trail bikes, we tend to ride flatter or more undulating terrain, where this 76 degree seat tube angle is very appropriate. There are some nice touches with this bike too. Firstly, the amount of protection on this frame is absolutely fantastic. Plus, you get this nice little wallet and <coughs> internally rooted headset cables 
And as you might expect with Canyon, for your money, you're gonna get a really well-specced bike. When it comes to these internally routed headsets, let me be really clear how I feel. I actually don't mind the concept, but if you're gonna have all the complications of it going through the headset, there should at least be some serious aesthetic payoff. I don't really see the benefit from moving your cable port to here from here for all that complication. This bike, which is light and sprite, does have geometry that can really rip on the descents though. And I think its spec needs to hold the line. For instance, it would be a no brainer to fit the ever so slightly heavier, slightly more complicated grip two damper for a lot more performance out of that fork. Similarly, a bigger shock wouldn't go amiss. There are some smart choices in there though. You've got a dialed cockpit plus this super long dropper. I've actually got this bike in for a long term review and these are my impressions so far. There are lots of great things to like about this bike, but I think it's about as radical as Canyon could make it before they're at risk of betraying a lot of the people that might just end up buying the bike. Although it is 130 mil travel, it's not as aggressive as some other bikes on the market within that same category. And at times it feels more like a long legged cross country bike than a bike that can really rip the downhills. The Neuron is a great climber though and I'm kind of glad that Canyon didn't get too greedy in terms of reach plus managed to temper it with a good dose of stack height. This bike is very good at what you'd expect it to be very good at, single track climbs and it manages to offer a balanced climbing position that feels very neutral even up tight steep switchbacks. It has got some solid geometry in there and it all really adds up however I don't want to sound like I'm going on, but it definitely deserves that bigger grip to damper. To paraphrase the French philosopher Monsieur L'Oreal, because you're worth it and it's worth it too. But is there another bike that's come out in the spring of 2023 that manages to include some of the spec choices I'd want to make straight off the bat? Well, absolutely. What is it? So is it like the Enduro Riders trail bike? Maybe. Either way, we've got it in for long-term review too, and I thought it'd be rude not to give it an airing. Just like any high school maths exam, it's very important to show you're working. With that in mind, let me click my fingers and turn this bike into the brand new smuggler. As simple as that. I'm gonna be honest, those guys really do tend to do all the work, but this is the new smuggler, so yes, it's 130 mil rear travel and yes, paired to a 140 mil fork. Yes, it's 29 inch wheels, thank you very much, except for some of the smaller sizes. And this bike features some similar geometry dimensions with similar figures in both reach as well as that 440 mil ish chainstay. It's funny, you know, transition don't really suffer from that vaguer brand identity as Canyon, who it has to be said sometimes feels like they suffer from the case of the Phil Collinses. With Transition, you tend to know what you're getting, but that's largely because they don't have to try and satisfy so many different demands. Their customers tend to be people who want a bike that absolutely rips the downhill. So what have Transition done to this smuggler to make it a bit more descent orientated? Firstly, it gets slightly heavier, read better, suspension, which is gonna make it more composed through the rough stuff. It also has a slacker head tube angle at 65 degrees, which is gonna move the rider's weight more rearward, as well as helping it track better through steeper or rougher terrain. That's paired to a steeper seat tube angle, which is gonna make it more at home on, you guessed it, steep climbs. And this bike tends to have many of the trends we're seeing in enduro bikes, albeit on a shorter travel package. One thing that is interesting though, is that the stack height on this smuggler is around 15 mil less across the sizes than the Neuron. Now they can do this because they've got that steeper seat tube angle, so they can keep it feeling planted on the climbs. However, a steep seat tube angle on flatter, more undulating terrain can sometimes be at risk of overloading the rider's hands and wrists. It's all a balancing act though. Now, stack height is one of the less glamorous or title grabbing geometry dimensions, but the role it has on our bikes is very important. Most notably, where our weight sits and how it keeps that front wheel tracking. It feels like they've approached the problem of balance 
in two very different ways. Transition have gone a slacker head tube angle and then mated that with a slightly lower stack to mean that the weight distribution is still there on flatter turns. Whereas it feels like Canyon have gone steeper head tube angle for the flatter terrain and then a higher stack to mean the bike rider can still get their weight over the rear axle if things get steep. Truthfully, I only got this bike recently and whilst I've been bumbling around on the Canyon for a few months, I haven't really had that much opportunity to swing a leg over this bike in anger. Now there will be a long term review for both of these bikes, so be sure to stay tuned both on our YouTube channel as well as the Pink Bike homepage. And as I go forward testing these bikes, I just think it's great that as a group, as an industry, we've got such great examples of lightweight 130mm bikes. And it's a good time to note, it's important to ignore any pompous pontificating pillocks telling you to make your bike just about as heavy as you can. These aren't enduro bikes, they're meant to be lightweight and they should excel on undulating terrain while still being able to take the hits should things get a bit rowdier. You know, it's great to see Canyon really getting up to speed and filling in that last section they hadn't quite applied their new wave geometry to though. And I think they've got their work cut out coming up against these North American big hitters such as Transition. Reviewing these bikes is gonna be a lot of fun. Now, thank you very much for watching. If you wanna tune into my Spotify, just search Henry Quinney, you can find all my trail riding music there. Thank you very much for watching. Like or subscribe, do whatever you want, that's up to you, and we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. Just me and my shammy. Don't even have to protect my knees. It's trail riding. Ooh, yeah.